Hi everyone. So in this video, I want to talk about the synthesis of secretory proteins. Uh, before I begin, I just want to say that this uh, video will talk about cell biology on a slightly higher level than the AP Biology or Intro College level. So if you are currently taking AP Biology or Introductory Biology in college, I would highly recommend you study the endomembrane system before you watch this video. So uh, what exactly are secretory proteins? So secretory proteins are proteins that are destined to uh, leave the cell. They're going to be secreted by the cell. Um, and remember that they uh, travel along what's called the endomembrane system. So in this uh, horrible drawing that I did, uh, you have your endoplasmic reticulum, which I'll just write out as ER with both your rough ER with these black dots, the ribosomes bound to them, and the smooth ER with no bound ribosomes. And your secretory proteins are going to originate here. They're going to be synthesized at these bound ribosomes. And then they're going to move into, this is intended to be the Golgi body. And it's here at the Golgi where the, the proteins are going to be packaged into vesicles and then finally leave the cell for the plasma membrane and they will be secreted from there. Uh, we're not really going to talk too much about the Golgi in this video, or actually not really at all. We're going to focus mainly on the synthesis of the protein uh, at the endoplasmic reticulum. So let me erase this so we can get to the steps. Because there are a few of them. So remember that proteins are synthesized by ribosomes. So over here, um, we have my cartoon ribosome with both the small and the large subunit. We have mRNA being translated here, and this blue squiggly line is my very simplified representation of a polypeptide, so your initial uh, amino acid sequence that will become a protein. And all of this obviously is heavily simplified because it can be hard to visualize these uh, on the like their actual structures. So I want to simplify the drawings as much as possible. And you might ask, what is this? Uh, what are these two orange lines at the bottom? Well, this is actually the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. And the reason why I have two lines rather than one is because remember that the endoplasmic reticulum still has a phospholipid bilayer, just like your cell membrane. This is important because it means that uh, if we can, if I can show you here. So let's say we have, we need to take like a cross section of this part of the endoplasmic reticulum. This top part here, these outer ends are going to be your uh, phosphate heads. Oh, I, that was, that was kind of unexpected. I did not intend for that to happen. Let's just do that here. And then you're going to have your polar lipid tails facing the inside. I'm sorry, I don't know why that's... Oh, it's working now. This means that the center of the surface of the ER, it's actually called your ER membrane, is going to be very nonpolar. Because remember, your phospholipid bilayer has a very polar phosphate head polar phosphate head, and it has two nonpolar tails. Uh, and this surface layer over here, these two surface layers are going to be very polar. And that's important because it makes this membrane very selectively permeable. So that's important to remember. So keep that uh, selective permeability in mind when we talk about this. Okay, let me just undo all of these. Okay, so over here we have our ribosome and we have our uh, polypeptide sequence. So notice how translation has already begun. Okay, that's important. Now for proteins that will be secretory proteins, so this is a secretary, secretory protein in formation at the end of the protein over here. I'm going to try my best to highlight it in black. This is actually going to be what's called a signal sequence. Signal sequence. So this chain of amino acids at the end is a signal. 
Now you might be asking, what is it signaling for? And this is where the vocabulary comes in. Because we have another protein right here. I'm going to denote it with this red squiggly line. And we call it the SRP. And what does that stand for? It stands for uh, Signal Recognition Particle. So over here, you have your signal sequence, this very specific sequence of amino acids. And over here, you have your signal recognition particle. And this particle here, this protein, is going to be able to recognize this signal sequence. As soon as this protein sees this signal sequence, it says, oh, that's going to be a secretory protein, and it's going to bind. It's going to have a conformational change when it reaches the signal sequence, and it's going to bind there. So I'm going to draw that in a step two. I'm going to redraw this very quickly. Do, 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 do. I'm not an artist, so I'm not going to, not really going to emphasize artistic skills. But you're going to get this binding over here. Now, when the protein, when this SRP binds to the polypeptide sequence, your translation is going to stop very temporarily. It's going to stop because this signal uh, recognition particle is going to be important in getting this secretory protein into a vesicle. Remember that when proteins are secreted, they're secreted through vesicles. That's how it's going to get from the ER to the Golgi to the plasma membrane. So I'm going to redraw the ER membrane. And I'm going to add two things, two very important uh, complexes on the ER membrane. The first is going to be the SRP receptor. This is another protein. And I'm going to, obviously, it doesn't look exactly like this. It doesn't probably doesn't even look like this. But this is probably the best uh, picture I could come up with for it. This is your SRP receptor. What does it do? Well, it is a protein. It binds very specifically, and it's going to bind to, you guessed it, the SRP, the signal recognition particle. Uh, secondly, we're going to have, let me do this in, you know, let me just do it in green. Uh, we're going to have a complex here called the, let me just not highlight that in. Okay, this is called the translocon, translocon. Now the translocon is going to be a passageway for things to go from uh, the cytosol to the ER lumen. So in order for your protein to enter the ER, you're going to need to get through this translocon. However, there is a catch. At the center of this translocon, I'm going to draw it in black, you're actually going to have an alpha helix plug. This is the plug. And this is going to prevent, uh, let me write that a little larger and more neatly, the plug. And this plug is going to prevent anything from being able to cross the translocon willy-nilly. So this plug is actually going to be an alpha helix, and that's because you want something nonpolar to be inside the ER membrane. Remember, like I said earlier, it's important to note that the interior of this plasma membrane is going to be nonpolar. Your edges are going to be polar. So in order to get through the translocon, which your secretory protein wants to do in order to get inside, you're going to need to be able to displace this plug. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to have to bind to this SRP receptor, which responds only to your signal recognition particle. And then your polypeptide is going to be able to pass through the translocon. So let me, oh, sorry. Let me draw that out in a new step. So again, I'm going to redraw the ribosome. Do, 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 do. mRNA. You have your polypeptide with its signal recognition sequence. 
you have your uh, signal recognition particle and your ER uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, and your plug. Now, what's going to happen here actually is uh, I'm going to erase this so you can see exactly what's happening. Your signal recognition particle is going to bind into the SRP receptor. And through a conformational change here, I, I don't have an animation, but you can kind of see where this is going. Through this conformational change, this polypeptide can now move into the translocon. So I'm going to draw that out in a new step, what that's going to look like. Oh, another thing is that uh, once, so this is going to be your first step in the sequence, and once that happens, once your uh, polypeptide begins to move towards the translocon, then this SRP receptor is going to dissociate and leave, and that's going to allow for your polypeptide to start moving in through the translocon. So let's draw that out. Again, ribosome. Do, 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 do. Okay. And that displaces the plug, which means that you can get your polypeptide sequence moving in through the translocon. It's going to come through here. And remember that your SRP has since dissociated. Bye bye. And what that's going to look like now is if we remember that uh, the SRP actually inhibited the translation. It stopped translation from happening. So once the SRP dissociates, translation can continue. Oh, I should have probably drawn the ER first. You're going to get your translocon. And that's finally going to allow for the continued translation of this polypeptide. And you can get all kinds of shapes with your polypeptide. I'm just going to leave a mask like this. And then this is going to be your secretory protein. So at the other end of this translocon, you're going to have some other kind of uh, vesicle waiting for you. And another important thing to note is that usually you're going to have some kind of protein uh, I guess always you're going to need some kind of protein to help facilitate this process. So let's just draw a protein that looks like, I don't know, this. That's going to help with this binding process. And a very common one is called uh, BIP. Or really, these are this whole family is called the chaperone proteins because they're going to chaperone the entry of this protein into the vesicle. And from here you can uh, stop the translation going on here and have a vesicle with your secretory protein. And from here, your secretory protein vesicle can move through the Golgi uh, into the plasma membrane and be secreted into the extracellular space. So that is essentially the pathway of um, synthesis of, of secretary proteins.